and my family really depend on it, so I'm going to be getting one. Anyone receiving the license under DACA will need to renew the license every two years. Thanks. Just your take on Live in the Newsroom tonight. Some lawmakers say these new licenses should look just like everyone else's. Democrats in the state proposed a bill to ban the new design. It would keep the two-year expiration date. Representative Paul Lupke from Durham sponsored the bill. He says that DACA means these people are here legally and as, sh and as such should not be treated any differently. This week, we watched history in the making as the Catholic Church chose its new pope. The final hours of the drama played out in St. Peter's Square on Wednesday, a little after 2 o'clock our time. That's when the white smoke rose out of the chimney at the Sistine Chapel. Two votes earlier in the day resulted in no decision, and you could tell the crowd was waiting to make sure this was the real thing. With the bells of St. Peter's, the crowd knew it was official. After five votes, the conclave had settled on the next pope. The crowd filled the square and nearby streets waiting for the new pope to greet the world. About an hour later, the world met the new pontiff. Pope Francis is the 266th man to lead the Catholic Church. In his first address, he asked the crowd to pray for him in his new role. Here's a little information about him. Pope Francis is the first Jesuit pope. He's also the first pope from the Americas and the first pope to take the name Francis. The election of Pope Francis marks the first for a local high school here in Raleigh as well. Annalisa Gell is in the newsroom to explain the connection. Well, Brianna, we're talking about Cardinal Gibbons High School, a private school affiliated with the Catholic Church. A few dozen students in the senior class are counting down tonight to Easter Mass when they'll get to see Pope Francis in the flesh. Filing into Sacred Heart Cathedral are young people of all different age groups. They're gathering here for a mass of thanksgiving in honor of the new pope. A new pope who already has over a million followers on Twitter in less than a week. I think this is the first time that we've actually had such a high figure reach out to such young people. And I think that's really cool that we can just see what he's tweeting or what he's up to. Students from Cardinal Gibbons High School aren't only gearing up for a pope that will be able to connect with them. They're also gearing up for an opportunity of a lifetime. So I'm just really excited because a lot of the kids with me are all going to be going to Italy. Daniela Byrne is a senior at Cardinal Gibbons High School. She's one of 42 students who will have a chance to see the pope in action. Well, every year we have a group of students and faculty and staff that go to Rome uh, and they're able to celebrate mass uh, on Easter Sunday at St. Peter's and then they get to go around uh, Italy and see all these wonderful sites that are such a part of our Catholic tradition. We give thanks for the gift of Pope Francis. This trip to Mass is making Daniela and her classmates excited for a new Pope. I'm just looking forward to praying for this new Pope and just getting ready to actually be with him in the next two weeks. So I'm pretty much going to base my praying and everything in this Mass to seeing him. And Brianna, the Vatican won't be their only stop on this once-in-a-lifetime trip. In addition to seeing the Pope, the students will also travel to other cities in Italy to see more Roman Catholic landmarks. Annalisa Gell in the newsroom tonight. Thanks, Annalisa. There is still one more hurdle before the pontiff can deliver that Easter Mass. Pope Francis still must be formally installed. That ceremony takes place next week. Vice President Joe Biden will lead the U.S. delegation to the installation. A four-year college degree, something most parents want for their children, but something not everyone can afford. That's where loans come in. Did you know that nearly 70% of graduates from four-year colleges have student loans? In fact, in 2011, the average college student in the U.S. graduated with more than $26,000 in debt. We sent Shanice Dunning to find out whether local schools are doing anything to help students with the debt burden. Shanice? Natalia, in North Carolina, the average college grad has about $20,000 of debt, and it can take students 10 or sometimes 20 years to pay that debt off. I wanted to know what schools in the Raleigh area were doing to inform students about their loans before they agreed to them. One student told me she didn't know anything about the consequences of her loan until it was too late. It kind of does worry me. Kim Thomas is a sophomore at NC State University, and when she graduates, she'll get a degree and $30,000 in debt. 
I didn't think I would be getting um, into that much kind of debt. And Even more alarming is that she says no one at NC State informed her of the dangers of student loan debt before she agreed to the loan. NC State University officials at the financial aid office declined to do an on-camera interview with me, but they did answer my questions submitted by email. They say that students are told about repayment options through entrance and exit counseling with the government, but students say they wish the university did a little bit more. I wish someone would have sat down with me and talked um, me, talk to me about the process. The loan counseling stuff that I have seen recently, it's just crap. Alan Collins is an expert and author on the student debt problem. He says schools need to make sure that students understand the price of education could cost them for the rest of their lives. I have not met even one student who said that loan counseling was of any value for them. However, at Shaw University in Raleigh, Junior Sharnice Hopkins says the school's financial aid office helped her to make informed decisions. In Income freshman, I didn't know anything about financial aid. Shaw won an award for lowering its student loan default rate by 10 percent in one year. The school says they go beyond the minimal federal requirement for loan counseling. How much um, you may have to borrow over the course of your college career. Proving that small steps can make a big difference with this national problem. I also talked with financial aid representatives at UNC and Meredith College and those schools also told me they're not required to tell students about repayment options because that responsibility is left to the federal loan counseling program that students complete online. Shanice Dunning in the newsroom. Thanks, Shanice. America won't pay back its student loans anytime soon. As of August 2010, there were nearly $850 trillion in outstanding student loans in this country. The average four-year graduate of a private college owes $25,350. The average four-year graduate of a public school gets off a little easier. They owe about $19,530. Your child's weight now can mean big things for their health later in life. That's why healthy choices are key at every age. In three minutes, how one school is taking that message to heart and teaching kids what they need to know now to get a head start on tomorrow. Plus, we'll give you another reason you don't want to leave home without your smartphone during severe weather. And the bill that could take a bite out of business for tanning salons who lawmakers want to keep away from the UV rays. For news wherever you are, follow WRAL on Twitter. The First Lady's new initiative puts childhood obesity in the national spotlight. Michelle Obama's Less Move initiative has one goal, to get America's kids moving. The reason? Nearly one in five children in this country is overweight or even obese. The number grows in adults to two out of three. One local school wants to stop the trend before it starts. I went to Carborough Elementary to see how they're attacking the problem. Kindergartner Caleb Morell enjoys a school-bought lunch with his mother. But any other day of the week, he gets a brown bag lunch packed with veggies. His mother's idea of an ideal meal at home? It has to be really nutritious, it has to be very tasty, it has to be really easy to cook. Easy. Not all kids eat as healthy as Caleb does. But students at Carborough Elementary have extra support from the school to make healthy choices. The kids eat with their eyes first before they even choose their food. And so it's very important that they see a healthy variety of food out there and that they're willing to ask the questions, you know, can I have the carrots or can I try the carrots? Eating healthy is the main focus behind preventing childhood obesity, an epidemic that's alarming the nation. Just the fact that one in five to one in seven children are overweight or obese and, and then looking at the adults that two out of three adults are overweight or obese. And fast food chains might have something to do with it. Fast food is just that. It's fast food. But we met one mother who wouldn't dare bring her children through this drive through no matter what. Every once in a while, as a treat, they go to Subway because they love those little snacks. And they put a lot of vegetables on there, so I'm actually okay with that as a, as a treat. Caleb and other Carborough Elementary School students are lucky. They have a dedicated team, including a registered dietitian, working with them. We've taken steps over the past couple of years to not only comply with the regulations, but to go a step further, to provide healthier options that are bright in color, that are not only tasty, but that look good. Experts say letting children try new and nutritious foods is the first step to a healthy lifestyle. But parents, if you're in a time crunch and you have to choose the drive through know that some chains are now listing calorie counts on their menus. An easy way to tell if you want that on your child's plate. And if the threat of obesity as an adult isn't enough, here's another reason to change your child's habits. 
A new study shows 43% of elementary and middle school students in our state have habits now that could lead to cardiovascular disease and diabetes down the line. One possible fix, cut your child's salt intake. New research in the journal Pediatrics looked at more than 1,400 children in Australia and found students who ate more salt also drank more sugary beverages. Kids in the study who drank more than one sugary beverage a day were 26% more likely to be overweight. Tanning beds are a booming business in the U.S., especially in the spring, as people prepare for that first beach trip or lake outing. A new bill proposed in the state legislature could keep certain people out of the tanning salons. Sefea Mokpai has more. That's right, Brianna. Current law already prohibits anyone under the age of 14 from tanning without a doctor's prescription. Now, legislators want to get rid of under-18 tanning completely. They call it a way to prevent cancer down the line. Christy Scott just started coming to Jill's Beach Tanning Salon and says she does it for a reason. I don't want to burn when I'm out in the sun all day. And if I get a good base tan here, then I don't have to worry about burning. Scott typically comes in on her lunch break and tans for about eight minutes. General Manager Bree Gaskell says timing is everything. She says the issue isn't exposure, it's overexposure. And they do what they can to prevent that. We only move people up one minute at a time. We put them into a skin analysis. We do a matrix. Um, and then we start them out at a low, low level. And Gaskell says there are options for those who wish to avoid the tanning beds, like this spray tan machine. Although there are some safer options out there, dermatologists say it's best if these doors were closed on youths under 18 forever. Particularly the adolescent groups. State Representative Jim Fulgham, who's also a retired physician, agrees. He sponsored the bill. The data that we've seen over the last 10 years or so has made it obvious that there's continued risk. Gaskell thinks legislators don't have all the facts. I just feel like the legislators should have come to us to see what actually goes on in a tanning salon. They've adjusted over the years and again they, they've known they've been under state control in large aspects of their business and this is just another reasonable restriction uh, 18 and under I don't think is unreasonable. And for the mom of a daughter who may soon want to head to the tanning salon? And I'd much rather get it here with a no burn policy than get it on a beach and get fried. The bill should come up for a house vote sometime this week and Representative Fulgham told me there's not much opposition right now so he is expecting it to pass. Thanks. Sefe Amakpai live in the newsroom. This is the second time a ban on teens and tanning has come up in the state legislature. Lawmakers made a similar proposal two years ago. It got stuck in a Senate committee and never came up for a full vote. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer over the course of their lifetimes. Doctors say the best way to stop it is to inform children of the risks early. Researchers found that only 25% of American children wear sunscreen on a regular basis. A government task force recommends doctors to talk to, talk to patients multiple times between the ages of 10 and 24 about the importance of preventing skin cancer. They also recommend no tanning beds, avoid the midday sun, and use sunscreen that's SPF 15 or higher. Severe weather season is coming up. Are you prepared? In three minutes, find out how your smartphone could keep you safe when a storm comes your way. And it's the writing on the wall for an elementary school staple. Who's saying children don't need to learn cursive anymore? Like WRAL TV on Facebook and let us know how we're doing. We see images like this all too often these days. A tornado caught on tape as it touches down. This particular storm hit Hattiesburg, Mississippi earlier this year. And here's what makes this one so unique. Dozens of people were injured, but none were killed. The mayor credits the local emergency warning system with saving all those lives. Now you could benefit from a similar system, and all you need is a smartphone. Jonathan Radford joins us with what you need to know. Natalia, it's a new alert system the federal government has come up with for severe weather season. You don't need an app to get it, you just need to be able to receive a text message. Cell phones, smartphones, we all have them and we all use them. Maybe, um... 90% of the time. <laughs> and for some, maybe more than others. On April 16, 2011, ERP seafood manager David Salmon's phone served a purpose much more important than usual. You too, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, we got about a four or five minute warning. My daughter worked uh, for 911 and she called me and said, Dad, there's a tornado heading right for the market. ERP seafood market would take a direct hit along with other homes and businesses near downtown Raleigh. 
it hit. It came over the, over the building, caved the roof in, water came in from everywhere. It took seconds for a tornado to come through here and damage all of these buildings. The new alert system will send text directly to your cell phone, hopefully giving you a few moments notice specific to where you are. Our forecast area is, is a central North Carolina area. Tornado, uh, flash uh, flood, and hurricane alerts are just a few of the tests that will show up on your phones after Darren Frizerski and his team at the National Weather Service issue a warning. A lot of people today are carrying smartphones. A lot of people have mobile devices, and sometimes they might not be in earshot of a TV or, or a radio. And so still being plugged into extreme weather events is pretty important. You can receive the messages anywhere in the U.S., as alerts will come automatically from the near cell phone tower to your phone. It's pretty cool. It's a neat addition to the suite of ways that people can get uh, warnings and alerts of bad weather. What would you think about that? Oh, I would love that. I mean, I would have, I've been prepared and made sure my customers were in a protective area because if I hadn't got the warning, we'd had some problems. The system is up and running already and the emergency alert system will also send out amber alerts and presidential alerts. Natalia? So is there any way to stop the text from coming to your phone? You do have the option to disable certain alert features. To learn more about how to do that, check in with the customer service representatives of your service provider. Jonathan Radford, thank you. You don't have to wait for the governor, government's text alert. The Red Cross just unveiled a free smartphone app for iPhone and Android. The Tornado app gives local, real-time information about the weather in your area. It also has information about what to do before, during, and after a tornado. The app includes a high-pitched siren when a warning is issued in your area. You can access it in English or Spanish. The recent hacking of Burger King and Jeep's Twitter accounts has us all thinking about online security. When it comes to our own personal computers, we know we need virus protection, but for corporate and social media accounts, that need is even more urgent. With just a few security steps, you can better protect your information. I spoke with security specialists who say this is the key to blocking computer hackers. Security devices are all around us. They're one way we protect our property and personal information. And on the corporate level, security is an even greater priority. CII Technology Solutions' so Mike Taylor explains. Corporations uh, should have...